Hello, welcome to 3D Printed Jack-O-Lantern. My name is Ken, I'm the Digital Services Specialist. Today we are going to use a free web-based software called Tinkercad to create a jack-o-lantern from scratch. Here is what the finished product will look like. This example is printed in blue, but all of your submissions will be printed in orange filament to give it a traditional look, just like a pumpkin. To get started, let's go to Tinkercad.com. If you already have a Tinkercad account, then you can go ahead and click Sign In over here. If you don't have a Tinkercad account, you will need to create one. Just go ahead and click Join Now, and then create your own personal account, and sign up with your email, and then complete the sign up process. Once you are logged into your account, this is what your dashboard looks like. Go ahead and click Create New Design to start a new project. First of all, you'll see that this document is automatically titled with kind of a funny name that Tinkercad gives it. You can go ahead and change the title just by clicking that. The title is not really important, but just for your own reference as to what this project is. Okay, so as you can see over on the right hand side here, we have the basic shapes. You can scroll through and see what's available. First, let's just start off by clicking and dragging a sphere into the work plane here. Before we start our design, I just want to talk briefly about navigating a three-dimensional space because it could be a little bit tricky to move around inside of Tinkercad if you don't have any previous experience. So, now that we have our sphere here, there are two ways that you can zoom in and out in Tinkercad. You can either go to the left side and hit the plus and minus buttons, or you can zoom in and out using the scroll wheel on your mouse. If you want to do an automatic zoom of your object, then you can come up to this tool here, the fit all in view, and it gives it a nice tight frame for you to see. Also, as you could see, up here we have um, a cube and it shows you where you are in your object. So if you're looking at the top and the front, you can spin around and know that you're looking at the right or the back or the bottom. So that's really helpful as to where you are with your design. And how you do that is by right clicking and then dragging your mouse to move around the object. So you may want to take a few minutes just to get used to zooming in and out and moving around the work plane. Okay now we are ready to start our design. Again all I did was clicked and dragged a sphere onto the work plane here. Now the color of the sphere doesn't matter it doesn't have any effect on what color it will be printed as, but if you do want to change the color, then just come up here and you can click and choose any color that you want. But just know that I will print all these in orange. So click on your sphere and we want to change the dimensions. So if you click on the corner here, you'll be able to see it's 20 millimeters by 20 millimeters. So over here on the right side, change this 20 to 40 and then hit return. And then you'll see it elongates the sphere to make a new shape. So next what we want to do is we want to duplicate this shape. If you're on a Mac, hold down Command D. If you're on a PC, hold down Control D. And then you're not going to see the copy right away because it pastes it right on top of the old shape. But what we want to do to the new shape is rotate it 22.5 degrees. So just come down to this rotation arrows right here and then click and drag. And then it should snap to negative 22.5 degrees. And also what we want to do is we want to nudge the new shape about five spaces to the right. 
So go ahead and tap on the right arrow key five times. And then next, hit Command D over and over again. And basically this is what we want the design to look like, a nice pumpkin shape. And so now what we want to do is group all of these individual pieces together. In order to group all the pieces together, you can either just draw a box around everything, or you can do Command A or Control A, and that will just select all of the shapes. We see there's a total of 16 shapes. And then come up to this group tool up here. And then after you click it, then you'll be able to move all of these pieces together. Next, let's raise up the height of this pumpkin to make it taller. You can go ahead and click on the front view over here, and that will kind of give us a good representation of how tall the pumpkin will be. Go ahead and click on this top square here, and then change this 20 to 45 millimeters, and then hit enter, and then we'll see now we have a really nice looking pumpkin shape. Next, what we want to do is we want to add a cylinder shape to the center here so that we can kind of join all these pieces and it will print smoother at the top and bottom. So let's go ahead and go over to the shapes and then pull in a cylinder. And then we want to make it the same height as the pumpkin. So go ahead and click on the top arrow here and then change that to 45 millimeters high. And now it's exactly the same height as the pumpkin. So now again, select both of these pieces, either by clicking the box around it or doing Command and Control A to select both shapes. And what we want to do now is we want to align the cylinder perfectly in the center there. So how we do that is we can go up to this Align tool up here. And Basically, we want to align this cylinder perfectly in the center of the pumpkin. So go ahead and hit the middle button here and the middle button here. And next, what we want to do while both of these shapes are selected is we want to join them together. So let's hit the group tool up here. And so now that looks good. The next thing we want to do is we want to flatten the bottom of the pumpkin just to give it a, a sturdy base so that it doesn't wobble when we lay it flat on a table. So basically what we want to do is we just want to cut off a little bit on the bottom there. As you can see, the pumpkin shape um, kind of curves and we just kind of want to flatten that out. So what we can do here is go to the shapes and drag a box, but go ahead and drag the grayed out box. Don't drag um, the red box here. So let's drag this whole box and then bring it out here and then go ahead and change the dimensions. I'm going to change the height to just two millimeters, so it's really flat. And then um, for the X and Y dimension, I'm just going to click and drag it out like this. Let's go ahead and extend the box really wide, and then we'll put the pumpkin on top. And now we know that the box is completely covering the bottom of the pumpkin there, so that's all great. Again, Let's select both of these shapes. So I'm going to hold down Command A, and then I'm going to group them again. And so now, when you click off the shape, then you will see that now the pumpkin has a nice flat bottom. And so when you put it on the table, it will sit nice and flat. 
So let's bring the pumpkin slightly down so that's touching the work plane again. How to do that is just select the pumpkin and then if you see the black triangle on top, then just click and drag it a couple times until you get to negative two up here. Then you know that it is sitting perfectly on the bottom of the work plane there. Okay, so next I'm going to add a stem to the top of the pumpkin click and drag another cylinder out there and I'm going to change the X and Y axis to be six millimeters each and then for the height I'm going to make it 45 millimeters or no actually 50 millimeters tall because I want it to be taller than the pumpkin which is 45 high and so next I want to select both of them and then let's align. I want to align on this axis and then this axis and then we'll see that the stem peeks through the pumpkin right there. If you want you could even make it a little shorter than 50 millimeters. Um, but I'm going to now group them together. Okay so the next steps are to add eyes and a mouth to this jack-o-lantern. You can do whatever shapes that you want. I'm just going to show you a very basic general face and then you can kind of go with it and do whatever you want. So for the eyes I'm going to add triangles and so this roof tool is what I want to use. I'm going to drag it out here on the work plane. And then I'm going to adjust the size instead of 20 millimeters, I'm going to say 10 millimeters there. And then I'm going to duplicate that shape. And then I'm going to drag it out. And it doesn't really matter if it's perfectly lined, but we just want to get a good distance between the two triangles here. So. I think that's pretty good. Um, and then what we want to do is let's select both of them, hold down shift and then click the other one and then we want to make both of them holes. And we also want to group them together so now they'll move together. So let's bring the eyes upwards. Go ahead and click and drag this black triangle there and now we'll see they are up and we want to drag them over and we also want to drag them into the pumpkin as we can see so like from this angle it might look pretty good but when you rotate it over you notice that they're not inside the pumpkin actually so get a good view from the top here and then just click and drag them backwards and then they will go into the pumpkin like that now you kind of want to make sure that they're also coming outside the pumpkin because if you push them too far in, then it's actually not going to create a hole in it. So I think that looks good like that. So now I'm going to select everything and group them together. And then we'll see that it creates a nice hole, just like a jack-o-lantern. So next for the mouth, I'm going to choose this round roof shape. And I want to rotate it 180 degrees because I want to make it a smiling pumpkin. So choose the rotation arrows on the top here and you can just type in 180 like that and then it will flip. And then also you can just go ahead and adjust the size um, I'm just going to basically click and drag to resize it. It's not very scientific of a process, so just make sure it looks good to you. Cool. Okay, so I like the way that looks. I am also going to make that a hole. And then similarly to the eyes, I'm going to click and drag upward. And then 
I'm going to come up to a top view here and then I'm going to drag it so that it's actually going into the pumpkin. So now I see I actually want to move it down a little bit so I can click and drag it downward like that. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. So again, I'm going to select everything and then group them together. I think that looks great. Now, for bonus points, if you want, you can add teeth to the mouth. And how you would do that is by choosing any shape you want. Um, Let's go with a box tool for a tooth here. And for this one, we don't want the hole. We actually do want the box shape because we want to add the space into that. So um, let's just resize it. Let's make it a lot smaller here. Once you have a good shape for the tooth, then go ahead and pull that upward and also bring that back into the mouth like so. And this part may get a little bit tricky so you're gonna wanna zoom in here. And actually, I want to resize it like so. And I wanna pull it up again and then rotate it and move it. So, I mean, this part is not really necessary just if you want you know bonus points for yourself um, you can you know position it like so and so I'm just gonna do one tooth for example and like everything else we want to group it at the end yeah so now we see a nice side angle of that tooth in the mouth there so when we're done we want to export the file. Go ahead and choose export over here. And also go ahead and choose STL as the file type. And then it's automatically going to download to your computer. And then I'll show you where we want to upload this file. Okay, so on balibrary.org, at the top here, just click Maker Lab. And then scroll down to where it says 3D printing here and click on the 3D print submission form. Please note that as long as you have signed up for this program, there will be no charge for this 3D print. Go ahead and enter all of your information here. For color, just leave it as any because I will go ahead and print all of these with orange filament and click on choose files and then find your STL file that you just made and then click submit. Have fun making your design and if you have any questions please send me an email at digitalservices at balibrary.org. Thank you for completing this tutorial and have a great day.